What's up guys, welcome back to another computer science video. Today we're going to be looking at the memory and data storages. So today we're going to cover the entire chapter related to memory and data storage. So further ado, let's begin. So in today's video we're going to be looking at the different file formats such as the MIDI, the MP3, the JPEG. We'll also be looking at the file compression techniques. We're then going to be looking at primary, secondary, and offline storage. And finally, we're going to end with magnetic, optical, and solid state media. So let's have a look at the introduction. So basically, there are many file formats used to store data. And um, you know, it can be either text, it can be image, it can be sound. Um, so we have different sort of types of um, formats, okay? And in this chapter or in this video, we will be considering how file compression is used to save memory into your computer. So these computer systems have primary memory, secondary memory, and the main technologies used are the magnetic, optical, and solid state. These are basically storage devices, the magnetic storage device, optical storage device, and the solid state uh, storage devices. Okay, and they all use technologies that is going to be described in today's video. So let's begin. First of all is file formats. Okay, we're going to look at the different file formats. Uh, so as you guys can see, there's a list right here. We have the MIDI, we have the MP3, the MP4, the JPEG, and the text and number format. So we're going to start with MIDI. So the full form of MIDI is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So Musical Inter in oh, sorry. Musical Instrument Digital Interface, the MIDI. So what is this? So this is basically a storage device for music. Okay, specifically specifically for music. It just comes from its name, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It stores music files. However, the MIDI files are not music and don't contain any sound. So it is usually thought that it stores music, but it's actually not. So that's uh, something uh, cool to know. But the MIDI files are not music and do not contain any sounds. They are very different. For example, the MP3 files. Okay, so the MP3 files can store music or sound, but this is not like that. The MIDI is essentially a communications protocol that allows electronic musical instruments to interact with each other. So it's a communications protocol that allows electronic musical instruments to interact with each other. The MIDI protocol uses an 8-bit serial transmission and we have learned serial transmission in the previous videos. Uh, basically serial transmission is in one direction one bit at a time. Uh, with one start bit and one stop bit, and therefore it is asynchronous. We have also looked at asynchronous um, in this, you know, in the videos that have been posted on computer science. An MIDI file consists of a list of commands that instruct a device, okay, on how to produce a particular sound or music note, okay. So it's all related to music, and therefore it comes, uh, it's not like stores music or anything but deals with the sound of music okay so that's essentially what's um, there uh, next up is that the first byte is the status byte uh, so how does the MIDI work so the first byte that is sent or is the status byte and this basically informs the MIDI device what function to perform then after that encoded in the status byte is the MIDI channel and the MIDI operates on 16 different channels, which are numbered from 0 to 15, okay? So let's look at some examples of the MIDI, okay? The MIDI commands would be note on and off, okay? This indicates that the key has been pressed to release, like that would be for like an electronic keyboard. You can tell that once when I've pressed, you know, it will be either uh, it's on or off, okay? And then it looks like key pressure. With the key pressure, it indicates how hard the key has been press pressed, and you know this could indicate the loudness of the music note. Then additionally, the bytes are required a pitch byte, and then we have the velocity byte, which tells the device how loud to play the note. So basically, when the music note is played, 
or when the sound is recorded on a computer system, the MIDI messages are saved in a file which are organized by the file extension, the MID dot. Okay, so this is the file extension, the MIDI. Okay, MID, sorry, dot. So the dot MID file is played back through the musical instrument, such as an electronic keyboard. Okay, the music will be played back in an identical way to the original. So basically, the MIDI is simply just how it can play electronic music. Okay, it basically processes and then sends the audio back, and therefore the whole musical note is sent. And it can store the entire piece of the music, whatever you play, maybe from a keyboard, it will store everything, depending on the pressure, depending on you know all the the top things mentioned. If you have pressed a note or not, it will record that, and that's where MIDF files are, and then the MIDF files are stored on the .MID. So that's a lot about MIDI, and it's very important apparently in IGCC. It's a little off topic uh, to computers, but it is MIDI. Um, and simply, the MIDI helps or allows electronic music instruments to interact with each other. So in simple terms, an MIDI is um, something that allows an electronic musical instrument to interact with each other. So now we move on to something that's really popular, the MPEG-3 and the MPEG-4. We usually always encounter this uh, when we are, um, you know, looking at files or when we're downloading something. It's always MP4, MP3. We also have the device, the MP3 player. So what is this MP3? What is this MP4? You know, what is it all related to? So the let's start with the MP3. Okay, the MP3 uses technology known as the audio compression. Okay, to audio compression to convert the music and other sounds into the MP3 file format. Okay, so essentially this compression technology will reduce the size of a normal music by 90%. So this is where compression also takes part. And also in IGCC, you need to know about compression, and we will talk about that in future videos. So basically, compression is taking place and it reduces all the way to 90%. Okay, for example, an 80 megabyte music CD can be reduced to 8 megabytes. Okay, so it is compressing without anything getting lost. Okay, so the MP3 files are basically used in MP3 players, computers, or mobile phones. And these files can be downloaded from the internet or CDs can be converted to the MP3 format. But how can the original music file be reduced by 90% while still retaining uh, its music quality? So this is done by the file compression algorithms which use Parisifal music shaping, which is basically essentially that removes sounds that the human ear can't the human ear can't hear properly. Okay, so that's a, just a brief, uh, you know, way on why, how compression works. Basically, some sounds are not be, uh, heard for, are not heard by humans. Okay, um, in physics, if you have done it, you know that humans can't hear below twenty, uh, below twenty hertz and more than twenty thousand hertz. So in the MP3, things that are below twenty hertz, it will compress. And therefore, it will make a difference for the human ear and uh, still keeping its quality and reducing it, um, sort of, it's, remo it's, it's removing its, uh, what do you say, the size, yeah, it removes the size, okay. So these mp3 files use what is known as a lossy format, since part of the original file is lost, losing the compression algorithm. So basically, the mp3 files are, um, what it happens is that the lossy format, okay, the mp3 files use what is known as the lossy format, okay. Basically, lossy format is reducing the compression and then what format it is right now currently in, that becomes the lossy format. So, after keeping that in mind, you know, we have now uh, the mp3, so mp3 is basically compressed and then we have got that. Now we move on to the MP4. The MP4 is a bit different. The MP4 stores video, okay, not, uh, it does not, uh, it, okay, it also stores music, 
uh, it's, it stores a lot actually the mp4 is stores music videos photos animation but usually it's for videos along with audio and uh, videos could be streamed from the internet using the mp4 format without using any without losing any real discernible quality we then finally come to JPEG files. JPEG files are very important with images, or not important, but very common in use with images. The resolution of the photographs is reduced from A to E, for example, okay? From uh, such a resolution, it can go to resolution like this, okay? And this reducing uh, the pixel resolutions, okay? The number of pixels are reducing, okay? And that's how we come to this. Okay, next up we have the uh, sort of formats. You can have a BMP image, you can have a TIF image, you can have a BMP image, uh, so on, so forth. Then we move on to some text and number file formats. Okay, we have the CG format that we looked uh, in chapter one. You can watch that video. I did talk about a brief CG format and how it uses hexadecimal. Okay, so hexadecimal is used in the CC format. Basically, you can check that video in the end. I talk about uses of hexadecimal, and in that, a CC format comes into play. So here we just talk about more about the text and number five formats, you know, uh, so on, so forth. But we talked about lossy list and lossy compression, and I was actually not aware that it was going to be in the same chapter. But let's have a look at this: the lossy less and the lossy file compression. So with the lossy file compressions, basically the data bits from its original data are reconstructed. Okay, when the file is again uncompressed, this is particularly important. So basically, lossy file compression is when it is compressed from the original file. Okay, and then the file is again uncompressed. Okay, we look at we look at this uh, more in detail. Basically, uh, with lossy file compression and lossy file uh, with lossy less and lossy, uh, you just need to know the meanings of it, and that's I think the most popular, most uh, important. Sorry, not most popular, but uh, you just need to understand about that. So with the lossy file compression, we you need to know that MP3 and JPEG formats are examples of that. And uh, with lossy less, it could be like a spreadsheet file. Okay, so there it is. We looked at all the compressions and we looked at the bits. Uh, in the next video, where it will be part two, we will be looking at memory and storage, where we'll be looking at the primary memory, like REM, we'll be looking at read-only memory, we'll look at all of this, hard drives, SSD, uh, and CD, DVD, DVD-RAM, Blu-ray, so it's a lot and a lot. This chapter is very big, so we are going to be splitting this video into two parts. So in the next part, we are going to be looking at the memory and storage. So for that, um, I'd like to end the video and I'll see you in the next video.